The New Relic Insights API is a powerful tool for adding custom data. It works with any programming language by sending custom data via curl commands and allows you to send literally anything that can be reported online. This tutorial will cover how to create a custom event, add data retroactively and add external data, and do some basic troubleshooting. The Insights API is an HTTP API, which means it works with any programming language using curl commands. This method also allows you to send external data to Insights. Literally anything that can be reported online can be sent to your Insights account using the Insights API. You can also retroactively add events using this method for up to 24 hours after the fact. First, we'll go over the basics of sending a custom event. I spent some time looking at the default data for my calendar app and decided I need to add custom data using the Insights API to record information about the events users submit to my app. To do this, the first thing I'll need is an Insert API key. I'll scroll down in the left bar menu of my Insights account until I see the Manage Data option. When I click that, it takes me to a page where I see a data summary showing the apps reporting to my Insights account and my data storage plan. At the top, I can see a new menu bar. I'll select the option API Keys, which takes me to a page where I can see two headings, Insert Keys and Query Keys, with a plus icon to the right of each. I'll click on the plus icon next to Insert Keys, which immediately generates a new API key, as well as a page with important data about my new key. I also see an endpoint URL and a curl command example, complete with my new key, endpoint, and account ID already included. Below that is my account ID and unique insert key. A single key can be used to submit more than one type of event, so you'll have to decide how you want to organize your API keys. For example, you could organize API keys by script or by application. Then, be sure to give your key a descriptive name based on that organization so it's easy to identify and find later on, especially if you end up having many keys listed. I'm going to name my API key Calendar Sample Event. I'll copy my example curl command, and then I'll click the button Save Your Notes. I can now see my new key in the list along with my notes about the key. I can click the Show button to see the full key, as well as the Edit button to make changes to my notes. Next, I will need to generate the JSON with the appropriate labels and key value pairs with which I want to store my custom event. There are a few important things to know when formatting JSON for custom events using the Insights API. New Relic Insights works with key value pairs. The values can be floats or strings. If a number is stored as a string, it will be treated as a string and cannot be operated on by functions expecting float values. Values for floats, or numbers, will always be formatted without quotes, while strings will always be formatted with quotes. If an attribute in a custom event contains date information, it is important to format the data with relevant attributes and value formats. For example, consider whether you want to display your data by categories such as day of the week, hour of the day, or month. In this example, I have included date information for my custom event with separate attributes. Start time, day of week, month, date, year, and formatted date. Each of these are broken out as separate attributes for display and filtering purposes. If, on the other hand, you want to use date information to calculate things, such as the number of events between two points in time, you will need to use a Unix timestamp formatted in either seconds or milliseconds since the Unix epoch. Insights does not support native Boolean values. If you want true or false values, you have a few options. You can enclose true and false in quotes. You can use yes and no in quotes. Or you can use ones and zeros as a float or as a string. Be sure to specify the event type. This is a required field. Without it, the post will fail. Use a JSON validator. Improperly formatted JSON will also fail to post. Avoid using reserved words that are already in use in the Insights default data. You can find a complete list of reserved words on the Docs site. Be intentional about whether you include a timestamp or not. If events are being sent as they occur, a timestamp is not necessary because it will get added in Insights automatically. However, if you are submitting events from the past 24 hours, a timestamp is essential. Otherwise, the recorded timestamp will be for the time it was sent rather than the retroactive timestamp you intended. One final note on this. As with date information, Insights timestamps are formatted in either seconds or milliseconds since the Unix epoch and are based on the UTC time zone. 
so you may need to convert your date information to the UTC time zone as well. Now I'm ready to assemble my curl commands. I can find a pre-assembled example on the page where I got my API key, as well as on the doc site. As I assemble my curl command, I'm going to make sure to double check that I change the name of the file from sample underscore events.json to the name of my JSON file. I'll use post, not put or get. I'll make sure to list content type as application slash JSON. And finally, I'll double check that I have the correct insert key in the curl command where it says x insert key. Finally, it's time to submit my event. I'll paste my assembled curl command into my terminal and hit enter. And I get the output response success true. But I still need to make sure it actually posted successfully. I'll go over reasons why it might not post despite the success true output in the troubleshooting section of this tutorial. Now I'll switch back to my New Relic Insights account and go into my Data Explorer to see if the event I submitted is there. I see my event type in the drop down menu and when I open the data table, I see my new custom event listed with all its attributes. As I scan across the attributes I just sent in, I'm also checking their formatting. I notice that the year attribute isn't displayed quite right. It has a comma in it, and that's okay. I can fix this easily in the data formatter. For details on how to use the data formatter, refer to the NRU tutorial using the Insights Data Formatter. Now that I've successfully submitted a custom event, let's take a look at some other ways to add custom events. Obviously, it's impractical and cumbersome to submit events manually like this, so I wrote a script to do this for me every time a user creates a calendar event in my app. Once my script had a chance to run and collect some data, I was able to create a dashboard and start analyzing the results. For more info about creating dashboards and data apps, check out the NRU tutorial Creating Insights Dashboards and Data Apps at learn.newrelic.com. Adding data retroactively after events occur is virtually the same as adding data as events occur. There are three main differences. First, data must be sent within the past 24 hours. Second, a timestamp must be included. If this is left off, the recorded timestamp will be for the time it was sent in rather than the retroactive timestamp you intended. And remember, the Insights timestamp is based on the UTC time zone, so you'll need to convert your date information accordingly. And third, data is more likely to be sent in batches. This retroactive feature is especially helpful in situations where my app stops sending data for a period of time. The Insights API allows me to recover 24 hours of data I wasn't able to record for whatever reason. I could also choose to have my script send event data to Insights in batches over set intervals rather than as they occur. This is helpful when I don't want to use any of my app's resources to send individual events constantly. Instead, I can send batches during slower times of the day or in chunks that consume fewer resources. Next, let's take a moment to talk about adding external data. By now, you've probably guessed that adding external events uses the exact same process we've already covered. So instead of going over it again, here are two examples of how I added external data that was relevant to my app to give you some ideas about what you could do with your app. In my first example, I have data about attendance at the events listed on my calendar app. I captured this external, real-world data by asking event organizers to do a headcount of participants and then submit those numbers. In my second example, I have collected social media data about my app using Twitter's REST API. Both of these external data examples give me a lot of great info about how people participate in the events listed on my app. All of this gives me the kind of valuable info that data collected from my app alone could never have given me. But before you start adding all kinds of really exciting data about your app to Insights, let's take a moment to go over the Insights API's limits and restrictions. You can send a maximum of 255 attributes per event, and each call you make to send events in batches can have a maximum of 1,000 events per call. A single string attribute cannot be any larger than 4 kilobytes in length. And the total size of any call cannot exceed 1 megabyte. Any one of these limitations can prevent a call from getting posted. For example, I won't be able to send 1,000 events if I have a lot of large string attributes. And even if none of my string attributes exceeds 4 kilobytes, the total size of the whole call could still exceed 1 megabyte. For the most part, I can organize how I post my custom events within the parameters of these limits. 
However, if an unexpectedly large attribute value ends up in an event my app sends, it will fail to post, and can even cause an entire batch to fail to post. Which brings me to some important troubleshooting tips and info to help you avoid this and other potential problems. First, keep in mind while you are setting up your custom events that you won't get an error report if you have improperly formatted JSON or if you use a reserved word. You will probably even see the output success true. However, it will still fail to post. So be very careful to check that your custom events post successfully before you finish setting this up for your app. Once you have verified that your events will successfully post, there are a few other errors that could crop up. I'll go over these errors and give examples of how and why they occurred to help you plan your custom data collection in a way that protects you from these kinds of problems. I intentionally created these 400 errors to test out my app's API calls. I got a 413 request entity too large error when I made an API call with events that were just too large. This could happen in my app if someone were to submit an unexpectedly large calendar event description, or if I were sending events in batches and an unexpectedly large number of events were created in a short period of time. The 400 bad request error occurred when I sent something that was simply not correct. In my case, a file that wasn't in JSON. And I got a 403 forbidden error when I used the wrong API key and when I used the wrong account number. Although both the 400 and 403 errors are more about setup, either one could crop up later on if something goes wrong with my app or with my server, or if another user in my account were to change or delete the API key I'm using. Finally, if an issue were to occur on New Relic's side, all the applicable 500 errors would be sent as relevant. For ongoing info and updates about New Relic status, you can check the New Relic status page at status.newrelic.com and subscribe to alerts and notifications from this page if you wish. Now that you know how to use the Insights API, you're ready to start adding custom data to get even more meaningful and useful info about your app.